and we are live yet. Welcome to Piano Academy. Um, I have the pleasure today to have here with me Dimitra Penchev, who is a composer, a pianist, a writer, producer, a multimedia artist. And uh, he is a friend of mine. So let's welcome Dimitra after the branding. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, um, and thank you for having me. I'm very, um, I'm, I'm honored to be here, and uh, as always, pleasure talk, talking to you about music and about piano, about everything. Awesome. So, um, tell me a little bit about uh, your your beginnings. You know, how did you start uh, uh, to really kind of uh, play the piano and being in music? Um, I started playing the piano a little bit by accident. Uh, I could read and write b before I uh, went to first grade in school. Uh, I was five and a half, six years. Uh, at, at that time, uh, we went to school at seven, seven years old, first mm -hmm. grade. I, I was about five, five and a half when I could read and write <laughs> quite fluently. Yeah. And my mother, who, uh, who was a teacher, said, uh, said to my dad, uh, he's going to be bored at school. So he's going to behave badly or uh, bother yeah. the bother the teachers and the other classmates. So they said, "Okay, we need to um, um, make him busy with something else." Right. And they they hesitated between uh, learning a foreign language or yeah. music, and which you said, did anyway, right? Yeah, I did anyway. But uh, at that time, it wasn't that common to do many different languages. Uh, but they took me to a local, uh, like a little music studio, mm -hmm. uh, and um, and they were uh, the director of the studio uh, auditioned me. So basically, he asked me to sing a couple of little songs, um, clap back, you know, the usual um, yeah. things that uh, do we do for ear training. And I apparently did good. So he said, "Let's sign him up for a piano, and we'll see what happens." And that was like a just by accident. Uh, basically, my future life was decided, um, but I never regretted it. I, I loved it. I had um, throughout the years, I've had some amazing teachers, which is the yeah. probably the most important thing to right. make you uh, keep up with music, even if you're not professional. Uh, teachers are very important, and uh, that's how I started. Now, the the good thing about the school was that. Um, it was financed by the government, and mm -hmm. so we didn't pay any tuition. Right. So it, it was called School for um, um, Talented Kids or something like that. Um, and uh, an anybody could audition, but if they right. uh, if they accept you, you didn't. Uh, your parents didn't pay any tuition, and the teachers were very good. They weren't like you know teachers for free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they yeah. were really they were really good, and um, I made some great progress for the first. Um, three, four years. And then after that, I um, um, we had these uh, local, like uh, regional uh, competitions uh, for mm -hmm. kids. Um, yeah. Basically, kids from the, from the region uh, play different pieces and uh, we get like first prize, second prize, third prize. Uh, it wasn't super competitive, but the, the thing is that uh, teachers from the uh, closest state music school Right. came to those to kind of look for future students, future. Mm -hmm. um, and these music schools were basically high schools uh, for um, for kids who play piano or play other instruments. Yeah. And uh, the curriculum of the school is basically uh, whatever every else, uh, everybody else is studying, like mm -hmm. high school diploma plus very intensive uh, music um, subjects. Like, right. you, like, like the conservatory in Italy. Yes, point, you study right? harmony, you study counterpoint, right. you study history of music, right. you do chamber music uh, once, a, once a week. Uh, you have two lessons, one hour each uh, every week with your main teacher. Uh, and that's on top of all the other academic stuff. Yep. And but on top of very... the high school. Yeah, exactly. But but that was but that was very good because it gives you also. It was in a bigger town uh, with big, uh, better concerts. You can go to you know the, the students had access to concerts for free and stuff like that. We are talking and, about Bulgaria, right? Yeah, Bulgaria. Yes, Bulgaria. Yeah. 
And so I was uh, around grade four or five. I transferred to another to one of those teachers um, in, at the nearest town, and she was um, she was an amazing teacher. She she passed away a couple of years ago. She was my best yeah. teacher ever. Uh, I stayed with her for over 10 years, 10, 12 years. And I, I can say that uh, almost everything I know about piano and music, the most important things I learned from her. Um, she was both um, a pupil of the Russian uh, piano school. She went mm -hmm. uh, to a, a specialization in Moscow, in the Moscow Conservatory with a famous teacher. I can't remember the name. Uh, yeah. And then she also went to Italy yeah. to and specialized in Santa Cecilia as well for a year I think she studied with Aldo Ciccolini or somebody wow. like that. Yeah. And she had from both, um, uh, they're not so much different, but still um, she could pick things from uh, yeah. both schools, uh, I mean, Western I, European. I think uh, the Russian conservatory originated with from Italian pianists going there. And kind of yeah, I think Italian and French. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. lot a yeah. lot of lot of it, but basically a lot of it from Italian, yes, because yeah. it was... Uh, um, but they they went in a different direction slightly in the in the 20th century. But anyway, it was um, uh, she was te te telling me a lot of stories about you know different approaches to music and stuff like that. Uh, she was also <coughs> sorry, she was also <clears throat> somebody who could uh, you could talk uh, about theater, art, contemporary art. She was uh, you know she had a, a very um, she had a great taste, basically. She taught yeah. me how to have taste. And that's that's something that uh, very few people in your life can, can teach you. Uh, right. And it's very valuable. I, I don't know if you've read the, the book by Neuhaus, uh, The Art of Playing Piano. Yes. Yeah. So he talks about uh, how he... Uh, inspired his students uh, uh, with uh, poetry and art yes. uh, and uh, yeah. exactly exactly yeah. she could she could you know quote stuff uh, she spoke many languages the other good thing about her was that uh, uh i have to tell her name i have to say her name her name was Yul uh, julia girginova mm -hmm. and she also uh, was a performer right. uh, she had an active concert career and that was also very valuable uh, not many students, not many teachers at that time were, you know, you, 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 it's hard to find a teacher that's both a performer and a good teacher. And uh, yeah. um, I mean, what can I say? She uh, she was uh, like a second mother to me, basically. She uh, made me uh, the, the, the part of me that's a musician and uh, also a person who appreciates art. Uh, she made she made that she kind of shaped that. Yeah. And um, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm ex extremely, extremely grateful. Now, uh, I have to jump a bit, a bit. But one of my students last year, I um, instituted a scholarship in her name, mm -hmm. and one of my students is the first recipient of uh, this scholarship, which basically includes, it's about three and a half thousand dollars, includes uh, wow. lessons for a year and uh, plus some uh, pl plus the books mm -hmm. uh, included with that. That's so beautiful. yeah, hopefully I can um, make it a bit more accessible to other people and, and make a you know add a, add more value to it. With but it's just a start. It's it's a start at the beginning. Yeah. You gave the first concert when you were twelve, right? Yes. I read it. Uh, what was the program? <sighs> I have it somewhere. Somewhere it's tucked away <laughs> in a small. Less. What small cardboard like a cardboard thing i think i played um a Haydn sonata not mm -hmm. not the whole sonata i think my uh it's, it might have been one of the bigger ones so i played the first movement i played some uh schumann pieces i played some uh, i think one of the um, uh tchaikovsky seasons mm -hmm. um may i think it's the white knights one um I played a couple of uh, contemporary Bulgarian pieces, so the small ones. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't remember much, but I remember that it was uh, uh, a little bit under an hour. So it's about 55 minutes of music, which at 12 is quite a bit. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, yeah. And everything by memory. Yeah. And it was in a big hall. Uh, the piano was upright piano, but yeah. it was in a big hall in, in my native town in Bulgaria. And uh, because 
it was the first concert my parents invited all the you know all the relatives the whole town so it was <laughs> quite it's quite a bit of audience and um uh i was very very nervous because i've never done anything like that before yeah. in 12 12 is just about at the time where you st start to worry when you perform I, I, right i think uh... You would never younger, stop being nervous, right? <laughs> I, I think I think younger students are okay, better with uh, yes. with the nerves, right? They they go and they play, but as you get around the teenage years, uh, you yeah. start to you start to freeze. And I, but I, it went really well. Um, my teacher was she was never fully happy with uh, my performance. Uh, I remember she, after every recital every year, she would sit down with me with all the books and just go with. For uh, um, through every piece, and do a full analysis of what I did right, what I forgot. She said she would say, "Oh, remember we talked about that? Why, why did, why didn't you do that?" And okay. it was analysis page by page. That was my uh, well done after the concert. <laughs> and so uh, we did this analysis, and she she asked me, uh, "Okay, so what was the best part of the of the concert?" And my my parents were there, and other people. And I said the best part was when I got the flowers at the end, <laughs> and they started laughing, and <laughs> started repeating that for years and years. So that's that's how it started. And I would do usually one, sometimes two, recitals. That means two different programs right. a year, and play them in different places around in the region, basically. And that's how that's how she taught me to perform. Yeah. Um, and with uh, so the. So she taught me. I, I can I can see now that she taught me at that age that playing in a concert wasn't the end of a piece of the life of the piece, right? Right. It was just a stage. So yeah. you learn something very very well. She also taught me to leave it aside for a bit, then come back to it later. It gets always gets better. Right. And then many people think, oh, you played in one concert, public performance. That's it. But then you discover that if you keep practicing it, you discover new things. Right after that, yeah. and then she would do something like that uh, with me, and um, yeah, that's how we we started. Awesome. So um, you compose too, right? Yes. Yes. And how did you start composing then? Again, by accident. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely by accident. I um, I was already at the music academy in Sofia, Bulgaria, uh, studying for my master's uh, in piano performance and accompaniment. And uh, um, one day I met a friend of mine on, on the street. Um, there is a street in Sofia, which is uh, like the equivalent of Broadway. L lots of the theaters uh, uh, are on that street, on one street. And uh, I met this friend of mine. We were together in the army. Uh, and then later we lost touch a little bit, and like yes. five, seven, ten years later, I meet him on the on that street. He was he, with a he was with a worried look, and I said, "What what are you doing? Where, where are you hurrying? What what what's happening? What's the problem?" And he said, "I'm about to," and he's an artist. He he's a painter, but he it turns out he studied um, to be a theater director, and he uh -huh. said, "I'm about to." Um, uh, direct my first professional uh, play, first professional production, uh, and I I don't have a composer. Mm. I've asked people, I've asked people that I like, but they're too expensive for me. I've asked uh, and I have asked people, other people that that want to do it. I don't like uh, or I don't know them, and I said I'm going to write music for you, uh, for your for your play. And I've, I've wow. never done anything like that before. I mean, I composed like children things when I was 10 mm -hmm. but yeah. that was like 20 years before right so uh, I said I'm gonna write music for you <laughs> and um, he he said oh okay well let's let's that see I'm gonna, brave, I'm gonna talk to though. the manager of the theater and we'll, we'll see if he, he agrees and he said yes and I went and um, and I started writing um, I have to um, say that um, I'm, I love theater. I've loved theater since I was a very little kid. Uh, my parents started taking me to the theater when I was two and a half years old. Wow. And I would sit for a, through a whole performance, two, three hours like that, and, and quiet, not, not make any problems. So I had um, like a theater, you know, in the, feeling. in the, in, in the blood yeah. a little bit, yes. Yeah. But, but composing for theater, I never, 
I've never even, you know, uh, contemplated that I would have a chance to do that. Um, so the first... I mean, it was uh, very, very brave of you to just like uh, go there. Yes, and, uh... and brave of him to say, okay, you can do, you can try it. Uh, obviously, well, he had he had professional actors and everything. So even if the music didn't turn out okay, he would he would he would be okay. But for me, it was if it doesn't have if it doesn't uh, turn out good, it was like first I, I never thought it was it's not going to turn out good. I I thought it's going to be okay, but then it turned out that I had to write. Um, we decided to have a, a live brass band on this on stage. Mm -hmm. It's like 12, 12 people all playing brass instruments. And if you know from music theory that almost all of them uh, transpose. Yeah. Um, and that was, a, that was a baptism by fire because, you know, I, it's one thing to write for a piano, which you know, <laughs> and you can play it. You can write for an instrument that you know, and it's completely other to play for, write for instruments that I haven't even seen. Yeah. I went to the musicians when I went, it was another city. I went to the musicians to talk to them and they told me, oh, my instrument plays from here to here. You know, <laughs> this this is this good. And, and this was like five minutes. And I was like, oh, taking notes. Um, yeah. uh, and uh, it was one of those, um, if you know, Goran Bregovic. Mm -mm, um, no, okay, that's okay. Um, uh, it's a, a Balkan brass band. Uh, <laughs> they play like a folk kind of uh, music. Um, anyway, um, they had some unusual instruments. But all of them uh, transposed. So I had to write a score, handwrite. I didn't, we didn't have computers then. I have to handwrite the score and then transpose each part. I wrote it in uh, transposed score. And then I had to transpose the, the part for each instrument by hand. So I wrote like 12 parts. The music was turned out to be about 40 minutes in total. So it was like a, <laughs> it's a big big piece of music 40 yeah. minutes for 12 instruments and part for each of them handwriting and transposing and i i i was very careful not to make mistakes because if you when you work with musicians you don't know uh if you make a mistake they they think oh what kind of composer is that he doesn't yeah. know what, what, what he's doing right. so i was very careful not to make mistakes and at first when i when i went with the music to, to them they couldn't read it at first right sight read it it was a bit harder and uh, it didn't sound good. It sounded they weren't together. They didn't count. I didn't, you know, tell them all the. So it sounded the first rehearsal started a little bit, and they were they were looking at me like, "Who's that guy? What, what, <laughs> what, what, what does he think he, he does?" And I wasn't even sure that's going to match. I, in my head, it matches. But um, and then when they started getting it and they started putting it together, it sounded amazing. Okay, so yeah. I got. I I got a nomination for the most prestigious theater award in Bulgaria with that first uh, project, and then they say that the rest is history. I I started um, writing uh, music, concert music, uh, a bit later, even later than that, yeah. when I went to the to the United States to do my masters in piano. Yeah. Used I started to, right? uh, in uh, oh, Dallas. Dallas. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, and I started. The, I had the first formal composition lessons with a with a professor there, uh, mm -hmm. Robert Frank is his name, a great uh, great guy and composer, and he taught me a lot of things. Also, I had I had again a very great luck with the teacher. With the first composition yeah. teacher, it was really good. Yeah. Beautiful. So that's how it that's how I started writing uh, by accident, but it turned out that it was uh, successful. But you are multimedia artist, right? Yes, that come again later, but that that's something that I developed over the years. Um, I've always been interested in um, writing stuff, uh, written poetry, some short stories. I even had uh, the bravery to send uh, some short stories since, uh, that that I wrote many years ago to send them to one of the most famous Bulgarian poets, and I sent sent it to to him and waited for like six months wow. and then i called him and said uh, uh did you receive uh, my <laughs> short stories and th that's my name and he said okay i i think i remember and then he quoted uh one of the the, the plots of the one of the stories wow. i said ah that's me and he remembered six months later and i was yeah. like and and he said you should write you should write more don't right. worry you 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 can you can do it 
and that was a big boost. So yeah. that writing, of course, it's it's a little it's very hard when you go to a different country and you have to do it in different language. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes time to. I'm still not sure that I'm 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 um, that good in English, but it, I'm I'm <laughs> trying <too>. to. Sometimes <laughs> I write in Bulgarian and translate it. Sometimes I write yeah. straight in English, and yeah. just try to compare the two and see. Um, uh, I'm yeah. That that's still the jury is still out on that one. I still I don't, don't know. know what kind of language uh, I speak better, you know, because even Italian yes. is getting yes. a little bit <laughs> yes. shaky. Yes. <laughs> um, so that's where it, it starts to go um, and branch out from the music. Then I, 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 uh, while I was living in England, I started doing a bit of photography mm -hmm. that added a bit of image, um, uh, just manipulating photos and stuff like that. And then I started uh, interested more in uh, video um, and and how to match. Uh, basically, that's um, that's been my uh, interest in the recent years. How to match all those elements, uh, music, uh, text. Maybe I'm very interested in the uh, the music of the language, music right. of the speech. I use uh, sometimes music of uh, recorded voices and use the music of the language to extract. Uh, notes extract uh, ideas for a composition. One of my projects right now is based on that, and then uh, also images and video and how to blend all of that so none of the elements uh, uh, overpowers the others. That's right. that's the that's the that's the difficult the most difficult thing that that to do with uh, to multi multimedia. Uh, yes. but then all those arts. Because right. very often you will see um, people, uh, it's a kind of uh, trendy right now mm -hmm. to do multimedia. Right. So you will see people play a concert, just a normal, like a normal composition that's normally played without visuals. Yeah. And then they, they just tack some visuals, something <laughs> that that uh, basically distracts you from the music. Right. Uh, because it's not, it doesn't have a deep connection. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that well thought of uh, thought out and uh, it just adds a little bit uh, maybe uh, they think they add interest but it it just um, uh, it's uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't work on the other hand you can see sometimes uh, people who are better at the visual mm -hmm. they do amazing visuals and then they put some music that sounds like accompaniment like a like yeah. a movie basically but right. that's not what I'm after I'm not after a movie um, I would like to have um, uh, interaction, uh, some kind of interaction between the visual and the music. So mm -hmm. in other words, if you imagine that the music is one character and the visual is another, they they recognize each other, right? It's not like, oh, one of them is tacked on, is stuck on the other or, you know, and, and the other is dragging it, right? Yeah. Uh, no, they are like, that. it's like a dialogue. Yeah. I would like to do that. Um, there is a composer which I like very much. He's a Dutch composer mm -hmm. called Michel van der Aa, mm -hmm. and he is um, he has degrees both in uh, music and in um, uh, film directing in film. Mm -hmm. So he does these combinations of video and music, which are very very successful, but so difficult to do. I did right. a piece that was called Gleams in Toronto which had um, visuals, it had um, pia a live piano played, mm -hmm. uh, some uh, pre-recorded sounds, which were manipulated. It had two actors, it had a dancer, uh, and all of those elements we managed to do in a way that, uh, in, not all the time, uh, balanced, but in, in many places they were perfectly balanced, and it was, uh, it was a good... Um, a learning moment for me to to figure out how some tricks and some ways to to do that. Uh, so that's my that has been my interest uh, recently. That's why I put I put multimedia artist on my or interdisciplinary artist right. in my in my designation <laughs> because I like to do all those things. Um, uh, if we we can come back to uh, my first teacher, to Julia, who said. Um, one of the last meetings I had with her, I, I complained that um, sometimes I write music and people 
uh, it's, it's hard to find people to play it. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, you need to, you need to do something that's, uh, that you, you compose it, you create it, you can, you can write, you can play and you can also perform it. So do something that you can do. And then you, 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 you can't complain, uh, <laughs> that, that nobody will perform it, but you can just do it yourself. And that's, that's, how many years before again she influenced me in that direction um you can tell that i was listening to her very carefully yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that was very wise because uh basically when we do something right the, we do it by ourselves or we do the for the fun of doing that because we are artists and not yeah, um, yeah. and yeah. you i mean you know best what you want uh, so you, you can't complain first and also it's it's kind of it's very gratifying to do something yourself and then maybe doing that you can uh, you can attract other people to your you know to, um, to your search yeah to your uh, artistic thing and then they could then later could uh, develop interest uh, yeah. in that yeah I have a question it's just more curiosity because i was reading something the other day about uh how composers should compose or how they are supposed to compose. Do you start from the structure? Do you structure the piece first? Or do you write the different sections and then try to find a structure? How do you start? Well, um, I, I, I don't think I use uh, one, uh, one approach. It depends on the composition. Um, I rarely start with the structure. Rarely, unless somebody comes to me and says, "Okay, you need to write me a theme and variations, right? Or 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 a piece that will include that and that and that, right?" right. Um, so, for example, if you write music for theater, that has structure because you know this is this scene yeah. and this scene here. But uh, when I compose a music uh, like a piece for like a chamber piece or something like that, um, I start with an idea, and I usually um start with impro improvising on the piano uh, yeah. and um, during that improvisation like many hours you can play for two hours and if at the end of those two hours they, you have one idea that kind of sticks and kind of comes back you come back to it because yeah. you like it that becomes like a not a theme but maybe a, a harmonic succession like right. you, I, I i end up with um, a succession of seven eight ten chords yeah. and then based on those chords I, I start to come up with a melody or i sometimes i will compose a melody uh which many contemporary composers think it's um, uh, a word that sh you shouldn't use <laughs> but I, I like to use it i like melodies and um if i can come up with something uh i i do it um to me composing is a lot like um directing a play because I think of the musicians or the instruments as different characters. Mm -hmm. And they interact, they have dialogue, they have conflict that gets resolved, or it doesn't get resolved, or yeah. drama. And uh, it has a, so it has a narrative, but I have to uh, say that the narrative is not always uh, like an old fashioned narrative where you have. Uh, beginning um you know a conflict resolution Middle and, yes. yeah sometimes you could have a, um like a stream of consciousness narrative right you can have something yeah. or you could have collage and still mm -hmm. the collage have some logic so it has some logic but it's not it's not always you know it, yeah. it, sh it shouldn't be straight uh it shouldn't be old-fashioned mm -hmm. and i come with come up with an idea and then i develop this idea it depends on how many instruments i have how many, for example, I'll give you an example. Uh, the latest project, uh, one of the latest projects I do is, uh, as I said, based on recording speech. I, I wrote this poem um, just by accident. I wrote this poem about uh, refugees. It's a, it's a one page poem. And I said to myself, okay, so how do I, what do I do with this? Uh, it's not, I'm not going to write like a a book dedicated on that on that subject yeah. right or uh, it's going to be just like a single thing so mm -hmm. i got uh, i translated it into i wrote it originally in english and then i started i decided okay let's translate it into different languages and then uh, ask people to record so i translated it into dumb. into arabic um um 
uh, what I have. I have quite a few uh, German, I have uh, uh, Japanese, I have uh, Chinese, Mandarin translation, and I, and each each recording sounds different. The yeah. intonation is different. Uh, I don't I don't speak the languages, but I can. Uh, but the text is the same, right? And each recording sounds uh, sounds different. So I I put these recordings, the audio recordings, in my software, and I extract what's called MIDI information, which mm -hmm. is basically notation. Yeah. Uh, and then I uh, put um, like um, I assign a different uh, like an instrument to play that. And the instrument matches the speaking. Like like I speak now. Imagine you have an yeah. uh, instrument that goes da, 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 right, and <laughs> this becomes like a melody. And then I, based on that, I create a bigger piece. Now imagine the the text, the poem finishes, the text fades, and you're left with just the music. And you you still hear that relationship to the speech, but now it starts developing more as a musical piece. That's awesome. And, and my idea is to have these pieces. They're going to be most of them are going to be for solo instruments, yeah. and to have a performance of those, like a person speaking the poem live, and next to him like a trumpet player, and the, the trumpet player plays with the poem together, and then becomes like a solo trumpet piece. And at the end, they they maybe do the poem again together or something like that, or a string Beautiful. quartet. Or so yeah. that's that's one way of. <laughs> Yes. It's kind of a very, uh, you know, it's a uh, winding, yeah. winding way to do it. But it's, it, it gives me, uh, the interesting thing is that it's one poem and it sounds completely different for, yeah. on, every, on every language. So right. I end up with 10, 12, 15 compositions based on the same poem, the same idea, but I can give them to different instruments and they will sound different. That's beautiful. Yeah. So now you teach piano as well, right? Near yes. Toronto. Yeah. That's and a big part of my, of my current, artistic. <laughs> yes. You're currently endeavor. teaching online, right? So, yes. Yes. So definitely. anybody in the world watching this video might ask you for lessons. Uh, oh yes, definitely. Yeah, oh, yes. of course, of course, of course. Uh, so you're it's... an amazing p uh, pianist, but also a very, very good piano teacher. I remember when uh, my students uh, had the, the evaluations with you, your comments were always uh, really on point, right? Thank for you. them, uh, and they are used them. So um, what are the different approaches uh, that you use with the different students? Um... Well, um, I one of the things that we do in our studio is, uh, first of all, we have this unique program, which is called Masterclass Program. Mm -hmm. And it has, uh, we have once a month, at the end of the month, we have a masterclass. It's, it's with me. So it's, it's like the traditional masterclass format, uh, but um, they have it every month. So uh, uh, when we had uh, lessons in person, uh, it was just me and the students, no parents. Right. So that's the least amount of pressure that you have for mm -hmm. the students. The, the very almost no pressure. They just play for their peers, mm -hmm. and and for me, uh, it's a little bit more formal though than a lesson. So it's it's it, it, right. it is a performance, but we also say that you can play something that you're working on. You don't have to play a finished piece. So they all come. Uh, right now we do it online, but. It's the same thing. They all come and play their pieces, and I give yeah. them comments. And they also, I also ask them to comment on each other's performance. So the students are sitting, and I ask them, okay, so how was that? Uh, what did you think of the dynamics? What did you think of? And you no, know, we have five, six, seven years old students, uh, ten years old, and they all, they, they all learn to not only to play, but to listen. Yeah. Uh, also, they learn to give each other feedback without being mean, which is a uh, <laughs> something very rare in, in this uh, yes. internet day and age. They, they learn to be nice to each other, even if they sometimes they criticize. They say, okay, well, he made a mistake here, but he'll practice and he'll fix it, right? Something <laughs> like that. So they always give you something positive, like, like they should be. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I'm very proud of them. They, they, and also, they, if they have to perform somewhere or do a presentation, not only perform, but... Yeah. Uh, presentation in school or something like that they have no problem with that because they've done it so so many times so uh, that's one of the approaches that we have also makes them practice better because they have 
I tell them that they could do a piece that they're still learning, like you know, um, make mistakes and stuff. Yeah. But they they like when they play better, when they yeah, like when course. they play without mistakes. So they try to do to learn it every month to learn. And imagine these are nine, eight, nine, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten years old uh, mm -hmm. students. They play a different piece to a higher yeah. standard every month. Yeah. So uh, that means they work on three, four pieces, and each month we push one mm -hmm. to get better perform it then maybe finish it or continue working on it then the next month we do another one yeah and they have basically we have 10 master classes a year mm -hmm. two of them are recitals so eight of them so they basically have at least eight nine pieces that they uh, finish to a higher standard every year yeah which is which is very I good I had a uh, similar experience in Italy when I was uh, after my conservatory after the academy uh, I don't know if you um, know or if you knew Luigi Mostacci, he was the artistic director of the uh, international uh, competition in Senegalia. But I know had... I know the competition. I don't know the name, but I know I, I'm yeah, very familiar was, with the competition. The, the one who started. But um, so he organized these master classes every month. We had to play for for a, a different pianist. So he had the concert season going on. And uh, every month he had uh, a pianist coming from um, abroad, and we yeah. had to play for this person. Uh, I could play for uh, Oksana Yablonskaya uh, and for uh, for De Levine, uh, and uh, all different pianists from all over the world. It was amazing, but there was a lot of pressure to us. <laughs> yes, well, that's that's a different level. That's slightly different level because it's uh, it's often and it's the pianists are. Uh, the, the more it's more demanding. It seems like more right. demanding. Yeah. yeah um, mine is more oriented to make them more comfortable to perform, uh, right. to make to make less pressure. And uh, uh, obviously, if they have a competition or exam, they they get worried a bit more. But still, I think the master classes that we do uh, lower the pressure quite a bit. Um, apart from that, I use the. Um, RCM curriculum, uh, Royal Academy, uh, Royal Conservatory of Music curriculum mm -hmm. of Canada, uh, but it's it's a, it's a very standard curriculum. Um, yeah. Mostly, it's you know um, divided into periods. Baroque, you play Baroque piece, you play a classical sonatina, yeah. then you play a contempt more contemporary piece, uh, mm -hmm. Romantic or twentieth century. It's it's a standard on you know, if you go to other systems, it's the same thing, just diff yes. slightly different pieces. But it's the same thing. That's why I use it because it's a good. Uh, I'm not very fond of um, students taking many, many exams or many yeah. competitions. I don't like yeah. competitions very much. But the <laughs> the curriculum is very good, and I I use it. Um, and I I work on uh, with every student. We talked about a little bit about that before the the show. I work on technique quite a bit yeah. because if you don't, you know. If you can't skate, you're not going to be able to do a triple axel, right? You right. can't just go and do a triple axel yeah. without having put a skate even once. So you need to have the technique, otherwise you you hit you head in the wall. Um, I always try to um, spark the imagination of the students. We always talk mm -hmm. about what is the piece about. I I often ask my students to write stories about. If a piece is not very clear what it's about, some some titles are very clear, right? But sometimes yeah. you have, you know, like a sonatina, and um, you, you you see this this piece, and you I ask them, imagine what 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 is going on here? What is is it uh, is it um, uh, joyful but fast, or or joyful but not so fast? Uh, mm -hmm. Is it a sunny day? Is it spring? Or yeah. what's the sun? Is it the summer sun? Or is it the, you know it's uh, I, I try to make make it a more um, uh, like a spark their imagination to think about to connect the music with some uh, some image or some Images, story, yeah. yeah. And that yeah. makes them uh, makes them play um, makes them uh, uh, play with more input from them, yeah. Right. But usually, um, very often, that's okay. Students imitate the teacher, and that's that's how you learn. Basically, you mm -hmm. have to imitate your teacher a bit. But um, for example, we have very often master classes where two and sometimes three students play the same piece in the same master class, and I tell them that's good because you can hear yeah. 
and it's true. Every student plays it differently, different tempo, right. different dynamics. I don't, I don't teach the same way every piece. I, I let the students do a little bit more work, and um, they could come up with stuff as well. And they play, and they see that you can play one piece in three different ways, and still make it convincing, yeah. and and still still you know be be proud that you you can say I've learned it right, whatever yeah. that means. Um, yeah. You can say, I know how to play this piece, and another person plays it slightly slower. And I tell them, okay, so that's that's slightly slower. Yeah. It changes the character of the piece a little bit, but it doesn't make it worse or better. Yeah. Right? So it's a matter of taste. So you teach them taste in this way. Right. How to. So, yeah, that's, I don't know if that answers you. But I, I know that your son plays the violin, right? Uh, yes. And, um, uh, I know that he started with a Suzuki medal, like my kids as well, yes. and I'm a Suzuki trained as well as mm -hmm. a teacher. What What are your thoughts about the Suzuki method? Um, I think uh, I think the Suzuki method is um, uh, it's a wonderful thing. That's that's the first thing that we need to say. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful thing. Um, it is very uh, for violin and for string instruments. I think I'm not sure about PM. I have. I'm not so familiar with the, <laughs> the way it's taught. I, I've seen books, I but I, I I'm not so familiar. The same too. I mean, I went. I have all five levels of training, right? And mm. uh, I was training to become an instructor for the teaching trainings in Europe. But uh, after how many years? Almost twenty years that I'm teaching with the Suzuki method, I started taking some steps back. Mm. for the piano for violin is amazing because you add yes. one small technical thing at a time and also the 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 the, the, the great thing is that uh, the group playing yes uh, they get in groups and they play together which is the earliest i mean you can see uh, yeah. children uh, five years old and they're playing with 20 other people like a small orchestra and they're doing like orchestral work or chamber music and that's amazing. That's, that that it's gives them limit, confidence yeah. because yes. they, if they, even if they play slightly out of tune, the other people around them play more in tune. And so they, they learn that way as well. Yeah. Very, very important for confidence, for, uh, you know, mm -hmm. learning how to listen to other people yeah. when you play. Piano is more individual instrument. It's, we are, we are, uh, we are damaged a bit because we, sit in a room and we don't listen to other people play much yeah. at the same time yeah. right we listen yeah. recordings but that's different yeah. we don't we don't you uh, it would be different if we we taught our students to play to do accompaniment from the very beginning right like to right. get together with other students and well instruments and do accompaniment but yeah. we don't teach them that because they are not proficient enough so yeah. for piano um, the good thing is uh, suzuki uh, re relies a lot on ear Right. Uh, uh, that is good, but it shouldn't be uh, the. Uh, it should be balanced between uh, ear training and reading right. music because piano is complex to read. Yeah. Right, it's probably the most complex instrument to read on the page because it's two staves, sometimes three. Uh, yes. You read pedal, you read fingers, you read you need lots of lots of stuff, and um, and we need to teach them uh, all those skills at the same time. I, I'm not sure if the Suzuki originally was intended for violin for strings to for string instruments and I think it works for the first three four five years of yes. when they start it works it works amazing for them yeah yeah I'm not, piano, I'm not sure is, about I'm it is sure a little bit piano. different for piano yeah because I mean uh, we have so many different uh things that we play with both hands and then mm. um, you know 88 keys that you can play with both hands so it's not limited like a violin or other instruments yes. so yeah it's yeah a bit different yeah um now how do you structure your lesson when you teach it so do you follow a certain structure or uh yes well generally i i found that i i follow some structure without yeah. so much thinking about it uh, but it's it's kind of I've come I've come to that structure throughout the years. So I've tried different things, see what works. But basically, we spend the first uh, small percentage of the lesson on on scales, w not only scales but uh, technical exercises, uh, warming up. So when I say exercises, I use um, very limited amount of um, I use only selected things. Um, I use scales, of course, because you can. 
um, you're not worried about um, uh, playing around note in a scale so you can you can assign more musical tasks to a scale you can tell them uh, or make a crescendo up and, and then make the innuendo down right or yeah. play staccato play three notes staccato play three notes legato you know this is like brain teasers uh, they they need to know the scale well and they kind of apply different techniques to it basically um and also the the system of the rcm has different scales for each level so we right. go through those as well but it's it's really limited it's like, like five minutes i also use um uh some exercises that, that i've done myself mm -hmm. um like five finger position exercises right. which uh for very beginners for complete beginners which um help them get familiar with the with a bit more muscle memory and familiar right. with the geography of the instrument so basically i i do a major pattern uh exercise starting from c from d from mm -hmm. e from f or all, all the white keys yes. and then i do um and then i and then i come up with different exercises for example um play um play every second note louder and and the others softer or something like that or yeah. long short long short just patterns you know yeah uh, again based on those majors so they get used to the beginning of the scale yeah. uh, i also teach them how to play the basic chords like c major d major yeah. e major f major right uh, yeah uh, i also use uh, one other thing that i use is the um, a, a series called dozen a day mm -hmm. uh, they're for written, technical uh, exercises yeah 100 years yeah. ago but but many of them have incorporated musicality in them like phrasing yeah. and 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 relaxing hands and stuff like that which is very useful to me uh, so that that's the beginning of the lesson then uh they usually have assigned um two or three pieces depending if you have a half an hour lesson they usually have at least two pieces assigned yeah. and they play them to me and then we uh we work on them uh so i give them a chance to perform the piece in other words to to show me what they've done throughout the week. So it's like their chance to perform from yeah. uh, play through. Although I tell them playing through is not practicing. Then we start working on bits and pieces yeah. and separately um, talk about dynamics. The idea is to make it sound more interesting, more artistic, uh, more unique, you know, so they can enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Because I tell them uh, playing the right notes is just 50% of the job. Right. Yes. Then the real work starts after that. What do you make with that? How do you make it? You know, what's the piece about? Mm -hmm. Why do we get softer here? Why don't we get softer there? And and things like that. And right. this mel this I also give them sometimes chance to write their own dynamics. And you yeah. have to see how um, when they write their own dynamics, they follow them much better than any of the dynamics you told them <laughs> to do. Because it's theirs. It's theirs. Yes. They might yeah. be Sometimes I leave them to write like uh, sometimes it's silly, right? They play suddenly loud or suddenly soft. Yeah, um, that's okay. But they follow so carefully because they yeah. they came up with that, and so right. they want to show off. Um, so that's 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 what I uh, do with them. So uh, then, if we finish one piece, I give them a new piece. Then we, we side read through a, every new piece. If we have time, I try to make time to uh, side read it in the lesson. <laughs> before yeah. we finish so they know how to practice i very rarely tell them maybe only the more advanced students i tell yeah. them okay look at this at home later yeah. but yeah. most i maybe i point attention to all oh, this uh this thing certain here. things yeah, yeah certain things yeah. uh yeah. then we do at the end we do some uh, sight reading mm -hmm. some uh, ear training uh yeah. like in intervals or maybe lots of sight reading i ask them to do lots of sight reading because that's a that's something that you could teach yourself. It's not a talent, right? It's not right, a talent that yes. you have or don't. Yeah. You can teach yourself to be a good sight reader. And uh, I've, I've often in the past, I've asked myself, what is the ultimate goal when you teach somebody uh, piano? And if not piano, but any instrument. What is, what is the ultimate goal? Uh, and my ultimate goal is for them to be one day self-sufficient. Yes. So they can open yeah. a piece and play and and come up with dynamics and phrasing and right. and, and style know yeah. about the style and learn always, it up to a certain point themselves right i always tell to my students that the piano lesson has uh, 
many sub subjects. You know, you have yes. that subject, the the skills, the technical exercises, and the sight reading, and the reading, and the ear training, and the music theory, and and the pieces. Uh, and then within the pieces, you might have you know the baroque pieces, which are different, and the romantic pieces, which are different than the classical yes. pieces, and uh, or the contemporary pieces. And then we improvise, or kind of we learn how to maybe compose something, you know, by ourselves. So all those things. Uh, are mostly in 30, 45 minutes, right? So there are all those small subjects that then, you know, they need to be practiced at home eventually. So I, I usually tell them, you know, it's not that you only have the piece to play. You only have all those things that you yes. have to practice. How do you yes. suggest them to practice? Because that's a question that they always uh, ask me, right? Or, how do you practice piano? How can we practice uh, piano better? Well, I, I tell them what we do in the lesson is that's how you practice. And if they have specific questions about certain spots, I can come up with some exercises or things like to show them. Yeah. So they, throughout the years, they build up this um, way of practicing, way different ways of practicing, like uh, practicing with patterns, uh, practicing with uh, uh, slow practice. Many of them, like many people uh, generally, think that um, practicing slow is boring <laughs> and it's uh, it doesn't give you much. Uh, yeah. But I say that's again back to my teacher. Uh, to yeah. you know, practice when when she practiced slow with me after just ten minutes of slow practice, yeah. I was exhausted. Yeah, I was I exhausted guess. because she would be like a tiger for every little every detail, sound, right? Every it's little a, sound, every little. I, I, had a, I remember I had a couple of lessons with Sergio Fiorentino. I don't know if you know that pianist, an Italian pianist. Uh, he died no. a few years ago, but. Um, it, he let me play the second ballad by list so slow that you know really kind of you had to check on every single sound. Exactly. Every single sound had to be connected in a certain way with a certain dynamic and not too loud and not too soft. And then you know, and you know that connecting a melody when you're playing very, very slow, it's very difficult, yes. right? To make it sound like really kind of an entire sentence. So it's uh, it's a very difficult thing. Um so the level the level yeah. of concentration required to play slow is amazing it's 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 it, it can't compare to anything else so you have to really uh and you have to uh measure every note every finger and uh, it's very very demanding very tiring but also very rewarding so if you do it like that then every piece you you'll learn it really uh in depth right, right. and so yes. i tell them you we do a little bit of that we do uh spot practicing you know uh, mm -hmm. i tell them don't play through if you if you've practiced the piece a little bit, you already know where the hard spots are. Right. Open the book and go there. Sometimes I tell them, if you feel that it's... Um, uh, because they, they open and start at the beginning every time. Yeah. And and if it's a piece that's more than two pages, it gets it starts good and then it gets worse it's and worse, worse and worse. And by, yeah. by the end, we're like, knee, in, in <laughs> single notes. And I tell yeah. them, okay. You know that this happens. This happens because you your brain gets tired. Uh, you start at the beginning every time, and you wait, when we make a mistake, you go back to the beginning. So the beginning gets played many times, and yeah. the more you go, it gets maybe you played the beginning 20 times, and the end you played once. So yeah. what do you need to do? Well, I need to start at the end. Well, yeah. Did you do it? <laughs> no, I didn't do it. So yeah. uh, practice backwards. Start open in the last page and start from there. And go backwards. It's something yeah. that's um, yeah. the thing is that our brains are. Um, we talked about that as well. Our brains are very; they're looking for patterns, right? And yes. when they find a pattern, that for them is uh, is a sign to calm down. So the yeah. brain calms down and kind of uh, um, uh, drive does, doesn't drive the car. It's like an autopilot, right? Yes. And as soon as you introduce something that the brain hasn't done before or, or in a different way, and the brain goes, oh, what's that? Right. Okay, what's it? Is that the danger? No, it's not. A, it's, a, it's an instinct. And so right. the brain wakes up and it increases your ability to learn and to remember things. So if you, if you play a passage and you change it a little bit, for example, um, I'll give you an example. We have, let's say we have this passage that starts soft, it has a bit of crescendo in the middle and has a right. diminuendo and it starts piano uh, and finishes diminuendo, diminuendo, and then suddenly loud. Okay. So yeah. I tell them, okay, let's play opposite dynamics. 
So mm -hmm. if it says piano, you play loud. If it says go louder, you go softer. If it says go softer, go louder. And they're yeah. like, okay, well, well, and it's it's hard because you have to, and your brain yeah. goes, ooh, goes on overdrive, but you kind of assimilate every little change. And when right. they go back and play the way it's written, suddenly the dynamics are bigger and they're more um, uh, substantial and they, you can right. hear them really, really well. Yeah, so, as soon as we challenge ourselves yes. a little bit. So right? you have to, to challenge yourself. You, yeah. Even you if just it's a like little really, bit. Yes, uh, just something new that you have really to pay attention to. And then, yes. you know, there's just like you can go back and then uh, until that becomes uh, something normal, right? Something that you know yeah. how to do, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Um, so how, was, how did you organize uh, your lessons during the pandemic? Uh, now, I know you said that you were teaching online mostly. How, how, what were the challenges in uh, kind of online teaching? Well, um, I find that um, the lessons teaching online piano, uh, for many years before that, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to do that because it's, it's not going to be good. Um, but then we were forced to do it. Yes. And I, I had to find a way to do it properly uh, with, uh, so the students could have progress. Mm -hmm. And we uh, and and um, not not less progress than than normally, right? So I find that uh, teaching online is not worse or better than in person. Some things yeah. are harder, yeah. some things are easier, and I find that it's just different. Right. And yes. many people many people are not prepared to do you know the things that you do to uh, get uh, uh, lessons in person. Um, Okay, you buy books. You uh, get in the car, go to the go to the teacher, yeah. go to the lesson. Then then the kid goes there and they they listen, they play, they you know they go back home, and they have to practice based on just this half hour right. that they had with the teacher. Right. Now, online, uh, first important thing is to have a good connection mm -hmm. and good sound. Right. So the, the 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 parents need to invest a little bit, a little bit. It's not it's not a big uh, yeah. uh, investment, but they need to have a good microphone, mm -hmm. and and even more importantly, they need to have a good internet connection. Yeah, <laughs> because it's it's yes. uh it's lagging a little bit. They have to get used to the lagging, yeah. so you can't play together with the student, but you can um, you can show them if you have good sound. I have amazing microphones here. I've invested lots of money. And yeah. and good camera on on my computer, and I have two cameras: one on top that shows yeah. the keyboard, one on the side. So I switch between those. I right. have good sound, and the other thing is I record all the lessons, so oh, the student beautiful. student could watch. And this is like having a lesson all over again. They yeah, could yeah, watch yeah. it every day if they want, and right. it will remind them what I told them. Not not many of them watch, unfortunately. Yeah. But if they do, they will make even bigger progress than in-person lessons right yes uh so i find also you know i also teach with um, headphones because i can hear every nuance i watch very carefully fingers and stuff like that um one thing that's hard to do obviously is to point at the page <laughs> and say start from here so i thought yeah. i had to teach all my students about bar numbers and now i have six years old they could count i tell them start from bar 17 and they're like Oh, 17. <laughs> and they start yes. and and they learn that's that's another thing that you have to adjust but um, right but i find that um uh posture is another one that's mm -hmm. uh, get lost a little bit in online because you yes. want to concentrate on the keyboard on the yeah. um, on their fingers so sometimes every few lessons every like a month month and a half i tell them uh, pull the camera back i want yeah. to see the whole you where do you how do you sit how your feet and 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 things like that, and if we right. have to correct something, we correct, and then we we pull the camera back again. So right. yeah. you have to uh, you have to think about those things a little bit, yeah. but I would say that um, our students have haven't slowed down because of the no. pandemic. Yeah, right. So I, what I I found a little bit difficult for me, um, you know, as a teacher, was really kind of to um, get a grasp of you know, uh, because I usually I notice if they are uh, having the weight on the keys, so kind of, uh, you know, yes. by observing them, you know, just like, you know, if they are kind of relaxed, so the arm is relaxed, so the fingers are kind of, you know, really walking yes. on the keys. It, it, 
got a little bit lost online. That, yes. that was something I couldn't really check. And when I went back uh, to in-person lesson, I had just to work a little bit more. Kind of a, okay, just to use a little bit more weight. You know, your fingers mm -hmm. just try really to press a little bit better. But those are those are kind of you know the advantages, disadvantages. You know, in that kind of the online. Yeah, lessons. that's why I listen. I listen with headphones. It yeah. helps if you have a if they have a good uh, microphone, yes. and you listen with with good headphones you can hear differences in sound better differences yeah. in sound and if you watch you can see which ones are yeah with with yeah. the weight or, or not but it, it's you're right it's very hard to do and yeah. um, i also ask them to do different things like if you ask them to do a uh, lot now put more weight now put less yeah. weight yeah. and they kind of find their own yeah. uh own way of doing it and and they remember how to do it and next next time you ask them they know Right. So it's yes. it's kind of it takes time. Yeah. It, it's, when you're in person, it's very easy because you just demonstrate. You and they show, copy it you and, touch and, the hand. You kind yeah, of feel exactly. you're just like uh, take the exactly. hand, relax, exactly. fall yeah, on the, the key the, or something, right? But, uh, yeah. The posture is something that uh, for younger students, I find, uh, for very young students, uh, you need yeah. help from the parents yes. or or siblings. They need to stand next to them and just, you know. Yeah. Um, Somehow, what, despite, do what you do. Uh, despite I uh, um, really kind of from the, from the beginning, I, I tell to the parents, you know, you know, they need a foot bench, they need to stay, uh, you know, uh, the height of the elbow and then the hand should be in this way and they should, you know, be at that distance, uh, that, that distance uh, from the piano. I always find, uh, you know, when I teach online that the students go closer to the piano you know just like uh, start playing like this right? yeah. <laughs> and then uh, or kind ones, of, yeah. they're kind of hanging there with the feet so, you know going somewhere or kind yes. of they're sitting too low and then the hands are kind of hanging on the piano yes. like that yeah. and they don't don't get to somehow it, it's uh, it's difficult for them to really uh, for the parents as well at times to really um the, yeah that's yeah. why i'm saying it's understand important the importance from, right from of, time to time to tell them put the yeah. camera back and I, I need to see the whole it. of you, yeah, how yeah. you sit, where what you sit on. Um, yeah. but one one uh, one other advantage, for example, is that you see them practicing on their own instruments. So you get an idea of uh, later when you go in person, you will know, oh, this student has a good piano, so I can demand yeah. from them yeah. to play more nuances, you know, uh, or this student has a very bad uh, electric keyboard. Um, so right, yes. you're not going to ask them to do half pedal, right? Yeah. Or I mean, right? I notice a difference when a student has a Steinway at home, right? Uh, yeah. A grand piano Steinway that they can play beautifully, even yeah. on other pian uh, other pianos, right? Exactly. And when they have a keyboard, then you notice that they don't have a sense of weight no. for the fingers. No. They they cannot let the technique doesn't prove that you know no, um, no. quick as and that's the importance of uh, really having a good instrument uh, tom uh, sometimes they don't really kind of uh, they think it's just like a keyboard is enough but uh, yeah no, it's no, enough no. if uh, depending on what you want to do of course you yes. know, if you just want to play a few keys here and there that's fine but then if you really want to go into piano playing or well what if you want to learn the classical learn, pieces uh and properly and uh yeah. not even professionally but just like a even as a hobby you need a good instrument the better right. instrument yeah. you have the better you will learn i have students who i i, I see this with adult students very much i have a yeah. couple of adult students who are uh who uh all of them got uh, uh since they started with me they got much better instruments because i always Tell them if you had a better instrument, if you had a better instrument. Yeah. So they got they got great instruments, and now yeah. I can talk to them about anything, any kind of phrasing, any kind of pedal, uh, yeah. nuances, you know, all of that uh, details uh, that are that make so enjoyable to play uh, uh, yeah. like Chopin, like a like a play difficult pieces, play more advanced right. pieces. I don't know about you, but I personally I, those kind of small spinets that we have here in the states. So, that and I'd never seen in Europe, uh, you know, those kind of yeah. small pianos. They're like boxes, no. <laughs> no they, they don't really kind of exist. But, uh, no. So I, I, if I try to practice on that, I would need at least to spend two, three hours on that piano to get yeah. used to the... the no, it's, know, it's, it's frustrating. Keyboard. It's frustrating because it does not react at all. It just, <laughs> just whatever you do, it sounds the same way. Right, right, I, right, right. I can. Yes. I, I, I will. I will sit down and I will sound the same way as a ten-year-old on the piano. Yes, so almost. Uh, yes. It well, will I not be a difference. That, but... <laughs>
uh, apart from the speed, right? But if yeah. I play the if you play a, a um, like a more elementary piece, we will sound exactly the same. But if I right. if we sit on a on a good piano, I will make a better sound, obviously. Yeah. And uh, yeah. the student will will have to something to learn. In this instrument, you you can't learn much. You, you're basically moving fingers, and that right. it's some some of them are even worse than keyboards. Yeah, there are keyboards that are that are not bad, but it again um, once we start uh, again having the standard of the RCM here in Canada, yeah, is 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 beneficial because it, it as I said it we, you you learn classical pieces like the yeah. regular classical pieces baroque, classical sonatinas. And you require a good instrument to do that. You require the proper instrument. Upright piano is fine. Um, yeah. Even even some of the basic Yamaha, Kawaii, they have they have mm -hmm. decent yeah. instruments. You can you can do with that for a long time. But keyboards, uh, and no, and and also all those um, pianos that they give for free. You know, <laughs> piano <laughs> yes. for free. There's a reason this piano is for free. Yes. Uh, yeah. And. Uh, it's uh, it's very important. I've I've included that in my policies, uh, although I don't enforce it strictly yet. But I've included that only for very beginners for the first six months to a year. I would allow keyboard, and then once yeah. they get past a year, they need to have a piano. But most of my students have have pianos, and I'm very yeah. happy with that. I'm very happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, it is uh, it is a problem a little bit because if you really have a keyboard, you cannot go past a certain Yes, and uh, the, the level, other thing, the other thing is that if you get a better instrument, a better piano, yeah. uh, it kind of uh, holds its value in a way. Yeah, it, it could go. And then I know. I, mean, I taught. Uh, I taught in Germany uh, for many years, and uh, I know that in the music school where I was teaching, uh, we had keyboard classes, which which were for keyboard players. Yeah. and uh, I I know that my colleague who was teaching there was uh, had. Uh, won a lot of awards for uh, uh, double keyboard playing or things like uh -huh. that. But he, he his lessons were specifically for the keyboard, so they yeah. learned how to use all the you know, you know all the different kind of uh, features that the keyboard had, the rhythm uh, to combine them to the, to the music, and the way of playing uh, the keyboard uh, was actually kind of different. You know, the fingers would yes. stay yeah, yeah, course, without weight. On the keyboard, right? It's yeah, of, yeah, you know, yeah. On the yeah of course, of course, yeah. So, and I, I think that's the right way to, yeah, you know, play yeah. a keyboard. So, learn how to play the keyboard for the keyboard, and not to mistake yes, that for yes. the piano, because the piano is a different thing. I mean, we yeah. don't play the cello in the same way that we play violin. You know, why should we play the keyboard like a piano? No? Yeah, of course, uh, so of course. It's and basically the same, uh, same thing, right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. uh, I've been, I, I, I intend in the future when I. When we have go back to hopefully to in person lessons, I want to do a keyboard class, but I want to do something that's called keyboard orchestra. So basically, right. there, there will be kids who normally take that they take uh, normal piano lessons, mm -hmm. but we'll get together once a week and we'll uh, arrange, uh, we'll put keyboards and but we will um, make them play different sounds, not only not only piano yeah. sounds, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we will arrange different pieces. And I've been in an ensemble like that in the past. Uh, it's yeah. called uh, uh, acoustic, uh, Electroacoustic Music Ensemble, or something like that, I yeah. forget. And we played, for example, the full score of Ravel's Bolero uh, live. Yeah. Everything was live. Uh, and we played with four keyboards and three or four other instruments. And we, uh, you learn because you, I, we played, for example, the Mozart's 40th Symphony. Mm -hmm. I, I played some of the strings uh, that were assigned <laughs> to me. Other yeah. people played uh, other strings. Yeah. And you learn you learn interesting things like that, but that's a different thing from uh, pretending that the that the keyboard is uh, play, playing like yeah, I mean, you know, playing a Beethoven sonata on a keyboard. Beethoven sonata on like keyboard. I, I'm not, not. I'm not going to teach <laughs> no that. I'm not gonna, so, I'm, what are your projects for the future, Dimitri? Uh, well, I had a good um, fundraiser this uh, uh, autumn and winter. I'm doing uh, something that's connected to piano. I'm doing twelve original compositions based on famous pieces for piano. So uh -huh. the way this this is going to work is um, I've I've, do, I've, do, I've I have done a few concerts that were um, start like I start playing Waldstein sonata for example uh -huh. and somewhere along the way I deviate from it. I start improvising based on based on the sonata. Yeah. 
yeah. and becomes this uh, improvisation based on the whole first movement, for example. Uh, and then um, I've done um, Bach preludes like that. Uh -huh. I've done uh, Debussy, um, uh, Suite Bergamasque, a little yeah. bit like that. Uh, other other pieces like that. So based on those improvisations and more improvisations, I want to compose pieces. I, I mean, uh, so, some some pianists do that, right? When you are in a live performance, you start a piece and then you start forgetting parts and you start improvising <laughs> on the parts. I mean, some pianists do that's, that naturally, right? Because you yes, have to go. That's unintentional. Yes, <laughs> that we yes. know. Right? <laughs> that's something yes. else. Yes, but yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but that's that's longer and more intentional. Yeah. This this was what you're talking about is unintentional. <laughs> that's uh, unintentional, but, yes. Yeah. But uh so I will end up with um, compositions based on iconic piano pieces. Uh -huh. yeah. But for example, the begin the, the Moonlight Sonata, the first movement, mm -hmm. I would compose something that will have completely different harmony, maybe different yeah. melody, you know, and like a piece, but similar, but yeah. um and I call them departure points. So uh -huh. the, the original piece is the departure point, and from there, I I I, I improvise. Now, mm -hmm. uh, many people will say, "Well, who do you think you are? You 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 can't improve on those pieces." Of course, I can't improve. They're they're, they're genius pieces, right? Uh, yeah. I don't have an, I don't have any intention to improve on them, but for me, it's um, it it has become quite the the world of classical piano performance has become mm -hmm. quite stale. And with all yeah. those competitions, it's kind of... I listened to the Chopin competition recently. Yeah. And I heard many, many... Uh, I mean, the kids are amazing. They play amazing, yeah. uh, amazing stuff. And at the end of the day, when the competition was over, I only remember one of them or two. Uh, yeah. All the others are kind of the same. They they sound... They, 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 they blur in the same. Right. Yeah. So we have less individualities. Uh, if you yeah. imagine in the past, we had... You know, if you compare but, but you know what it is, uh, Benedetti it, Michelangeli to Richter or right, to they, Brendel, different, right? You can completely hear completely different. Completely yeah. every even if you hear the same piece, completely yeah. different. Yeah, you Nowadays, can hear, oh, that's Michelangeli, you know, that's yeah, a sound exactly that Michelangelo exactly has. the sound, even the sound, not even the you don't right. even but need now to hear the, the problem whole piece. is that we we are yeah, you know the level is a little bit higher of all the pianists, right? So because uh, you know of the possibilities you have uh, YouTube, you have uh, all the recordings out there, all the video, all the master classes, hear... everybody's available. Yeah, I hear I but hear... then uh, you miss that kind of you know to step. I hear I hear but... great technical capabilities, yeah. uh, but I don't hear much thinking. I don't hear individuality. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 just yeah, ideas. Yeah. I don't hear ideas. And right. uh, yes. again, my teacher, coming back to her, said the twenty first century will be the the century f uh, uh, best for pianists with ideas. Not right. uh, all of that uh, competitions and stuff like that will produce lots of pianists who play amazing, great technique, and then they fade away, and you forget yeah. about them uh, yeah. two years later. I mean, if but, you if you think about how much work they put into really kind of preparing those pieces oh, yeah. over and over amazing. and over again, amazing. I mean, it's, a, it's a kind of an incredible amount of work. When I participated is, in the show competition, eight, it was like eight, this yeah, is nine eight, hours, nine hours, hours a day. day. Yeah, yeah, every yeah. day for months, yeah. right? So yes, it's, yes, it, yes. it's a lot of work. And then it's if amazing. you see that, I mean, one will win, right? And then. Everybody else is out there with not, this amount of work. Not, right? not always the best because sometimes uh, uh, good yeah. per, good uh, artists uh, don't do so well under great pressure. And I the, mean, uh, yeah. a little yeah. bit of pressure is okay, but this this is the this is the most pressure. I mean, it's like yeah. even a single mistake, and they think, oh, I'm 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 gone. And uh, right. you know, there are other things like many uh, uh, in many competitions, you have to go beforehand have a lesson with the people of the jury yep. <laughs> play, uh, pay thousands of dollars so they know you now it's not yes it's not, you know that's, kind of, that's it's what not i hear like uh it's, it's not corruption or anything but it's but it's they have to it's know you beforehand right yeah like yeah. if i don't have the money to go to it's not fair yeah it's not uh, fair pianist x or you know uh, then uh you know i don't uh i'm yeah. not i'm out of the network right of, yeah. Uh, yeah 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 exactly I, 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 now not that i really want to mention uh, things but uh, there is a famous academy in italy where they you know whoever wants to win competitions has to go Right, yeah. sort of. And there's, a, there's kind of an obligatory path to whoever wants yeah. to win a competition. Yeah. And I'm not saying that they do uh, bad work in there, right? There so was obviously a, there they, 
the practice. There was but... another there was another pianist that we all know his name. He was teaching in Germany and he was the person to uh, yeah, yeah, have no. a lesson with if you want to do any of the yeah, you know yeah, uh, big yeah. competitions. Uh yeah. he's he's not that uh it's a good business influential for the now. I'm in. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> He can. He probably tar- charges a thousand dollars for for a lesson, yeah, and yeah, he yeah. doesn't. Uh, he's not going to tell them much more than me and you. But uh, no, 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 no. no they don't tell much it's, more. Um, yes. It's that's that's how the system is set. Uh, I remember. I remember a lesson I had with a famous pianist, Italian pianist, a famous Italian pianist. Uh, and I, I was fifteen. I was playing Mephisto Waltz, and um, and the only thing he did was to sit at the piano next to me. I paid $150 for that lesson. For that, It was a master class, right? So sat to, on the piano next to me and played the piece. And there was this lesson. And I was like, why did I pay $150 for that? I could buy a recording for much less than that, <laughs> right? So that was my thought. And then the second in the master class, my, my teacher was trying to kind of, you know, push me uh, to you know, do it. And I said, there's no way that I'm going to pay that much money for this. I mean, you know, it was probably stupid on my side because obviously you go and take lesson with, uh, you know, that famous pianist and uh, you get some advantages, right? On the other hand, but I was like, yeah, I'm course, not that stupid to just not take lesson. I prefer to pay that same amount of money, you know, for a lesson, which is valuable to me, you know, and I will learn. Oh yeah. They're, they're, they're amazing teachers. I, I had, um, I had one lesson like that uh, in my life where one lesson changed the way I play completely. Yeah. And that was yeah, yeah. with a with a Russian pianist in Cleveland. His name is you know him. His name is Sergei Babayan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. he is absolutely um, um um like a fiery performer and something that I like myself yeah. as a style. Um he uh, a friend of mine arranged for me to play for him. Um yeah. He had this academy, uh, like a summer summer academy, yeah, yeah, yeah. where you can apply and and go and and work with him for I think for t- two weeks, mm-hmm. have a lesson yeah. every two days. You have a lesson mm-hmm. with him, yeah. and you yeah. work on something and you present at the end, like you play in a concert with all the other right, right, right. Uh, with yeah. all the other um, people. And the idea was for him to see if I can fit with that, if he can, you know, again, like uh, instead of applying blind, he could, you know. And I, I needed to see, uh, I needed to see, I, I was at that point where I needed a bit of um, confirmation that I'm on the right track. Right, yes. So I had this program ready and I went to play for uh, for him. It, we were supposed to meet for one hour. It took three hours. He didn't, yeah. uh, he, he didn't say, I didn't pay yeah. anything. He didn't ask for right. anything. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I had the same hours. experience with uh, Sergio Fiorentino in Italy. Uh, I played were... kind of literally, the, uh, I played, I think, the... Um, Mendelssohn uh, version series, uh, and mm. then I played uh, the list ballad for him. It was three hours lessons. Didn't pay a dime for yeah. that because it was yes. an extra thing he was doing in his free time. So yeah. in his free time, he had fun, you know, yeah. doing uh, just, these things. He yeah. just donated his time to me, and yes. and and was uh, was the most amazing, you know, lesson that I've had in a long, long time. And okay. he said, "Okay, you." Um, you have the talent and the ability to be my student, but you need to come to this academy first, so I can work with you in two weeks and and see you know see how yeah. how fast you pick up how. Um, and unfortunately, I was a I was a student in Dallas then. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't have it was fifteen hundred dollars. I didn't yeah. have I didn't have the money to, and I couldn't find it. I couldn't I, I didn't know people to ask for sponsorship and stuff like that. Right, yeah. I couldn't find it, and then it fell through. But it was the yeah. most amazing lesson. We worked on Beethoven sonatas. We worked on, yeah. uh, I think, fourth ballad, Chopin, and stuff like that. It and was, if you if you notice those people, they give you this inspiring, uh, really kind of uh, uh, feedback that is, you know, really kind of uh, uh, for you. It's not the general thing, like oh, yeah. the Beethoven sonata has to be played this way, and then you have to do this, and you have to do that. It's just for you. Like, what can you do better? And that, and they yeah. see that right away. So it's just like a good teacher should just really kind of, I think, should just you know yeah. listen to the student and say, okay, the student needs to work on the sound, on relaxing the shoulders, on connecting the melody better, on playing the accompaniment. So, yeah, all those small things. And then they see that and they tell you that. And then it's already better because it's just the one thing that you were missing all the time, right? Yes, yes. Uh, well, I, I had 
I had one lesson with him and I'm I'm completely ready to list him as one of my teachers, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to, to a point that's that's how how much influence yeah. that yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I can say, oh, OK, I had uh, I mean, I can't say I studied with him, but I had a yeah. lesson with him and he's one of my right. teachers that he is, yes. he is really he is. Yeah. Yeah. amazing musician, amazing, amazing person. Yeah. So you also come across those people. So uh, I I thought I'd mention it since we talk about people charging a lot of money for lessons and not deservedly yeah. but there are other people who completely you know you uh, you're you're lucky to yeah. to have them as teachers yeah I, I think the quality of the teacher especially at the beginning uh, you know if it's a very very good teacher it, it's it makes a huge difference in uh, yes. everything yes. right because you have a professional um really kind of taking care of you since the beginning and installing the right softwares in your mind, right? So that you yes. kind of think yes. in the right way. Uh, yes. and, I, and I noticed when I take students that had those already started somewhere else, it's just, you know, always like uh, this uh, a period uh, in which I have to figure out, you know, what- Yes, yeah. adjustment. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Can I improve? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I also find that it's it's it takes adjustment, but it's, uh, I think, uh, students uh, appreciate when you when you like what you do when you do it yeah. with passion yeah. and yeah. Uh, when you teach them something and makes them feel good to play it that's yeah. um, that's the ultimate yeah <laughs> okay okay Divisa, thank you so much for your time and for being with us today and uh, so i will post the links uh, to your youtube channels uh, and then to your websites below in the description okay and uh, whoever wants to subscribe to my channel, to his channel, or to follow Demeter in his work, you just please check uh, the description. Thank you so much. Uh, and you're welcome. Nice and good luck with all you do. You're, you're amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.